Okay, thanks to the organizers for having me and thanks everyone for coming. It's really nice outside, so I really <laughs> appreciate you being here. This is joint work with Oliver Dasbach. So let me start with a very, very general motivation. So please bear with me for a moment. Um, so very general framework comes from 70s, 80s. So in 76, as we know, Thurston suggested the geometrization conjecture. So uh, in particular, he demonstrated the, the fact that many three manifolds have hyperbolic metric or can be decomposed into pieces <coughs> as hyperbolic metric, so-called hyperbolization theorem. And of course, it allowed to study manifolds from new perspective using geometry and gave rise, rise to numerous invariants, right, since due to most of Prosat rigidity, hyperbolic metric is unique as long as it is complete. And on the other hand, in 84, so approximately almost at the same time, Jones discovered the Jones polynomial for knots. So to each oriented uh, link, it assigns a Laurent polynomial with integer coefficients. And the discovery simulated um, development of a new field of study, which we call quantum invariance of knots on links. And since quantum invariants were introduced in knot theory, um, there has been a strong interest in relating them to intrinsic geometry of link complements. So this is a very, very general uh, framework, framework and motivation for what I will be talking about. Um, so let's, well, let's look at some simple things first. Well, of course, Thurston demonstrated that every link in S3 is either a torus link or a satellite link, so it contains an incompressible non-boundary parallel torus, or is a hyperbolic link. And moreover, these three categories are mutually exclusive. And uh, every knot can be uniquely decomposed into same sum of prime knots. So this was something shown long time by Schubert and Hashizumi um, generalized, generalized this to non-split links. Um, so if there is no two sphere in the complement separating the link. And if you look at those prime links, and if you look at experimental result by Hoste, uh, Thistlethwaite, and Wicks, we see that many, many links are in fact hyperbolic prime links and knots. So of the, of the 14 prime knots, three are non-hyperbolic, so that's up to seven crossings, up to 16 crossings, we have million seven hundred thousand thirty two non hyperbolic and out of eight million uh, with exactly seventeen crossings we have only thirty non hyperbolic. So if we look at knots and links we really perhaps want to look at their intrinsic geometry. And let's look at color Jones polynomial. Uh, so let's recall some simple things about it. So color Jones polynomial is a sequence of Laurent polynomial. Um, so we have a variable Q that will be our notation uh, n is a color, so n is index of those Laurent polynomials, and it's a natural number. And k is the knot or link uh, we're looking at. And color n equals 2 gives the classical Jones polynomial for knots and links. So we will denote it, uh, well, the notation will be something like this. We intend here, so these are first coefficients, so called leading coefficients, and those three are the last coefficients, trailing coefficients, so of the highest and lowest uh, degree respectively. So you can look at examples. This will be just sequence of numbers, infinite sequence. Um, so this, these are coefficients for this particular link, um, not actually. And there are various approaches to defining color Jones polynomial. I will not give a uh, definition, but you can use quantum groups and R matrices. That's something derived it. Uh, you can use Kaufman bracket. That's something um, basically skein relation and skein modules. And you can use churn simon theory. So that's something Witten suggested. And what's interesting, however, no matter which approach you use, you see no connection uh, to hyperbolic geometry of a link. And well, of course, we don't have simple uh, function for volume as well. So to compute the volume, you can use gluing and completeness equations, or you can use alternative equations that we suggested. But basically, you have to do a triangulation, and you have to compute every every angle. And then once you compute every angle in a triangulation of a link complement, you take Lobachevsky function. Lobachevsky function is an integral of sine log, and so on, and so on. So you don't have volume function. Um, and so we will be looking at volume, but we will also be looking at uh, simplicial volume. And uh, um, so for our purposes, we will need only to know a little bit about simplicial volume. So Gromov introduced a norm on the homology of a three manifold, and the simplicial volume is just the volume of a regular ideal tetrahedron t 
contains the chromosome. And um, what we will need to know is not the exact definition, but rather that for a hyperbolic stream manifold, the amplitude volume is the same as hyperbolic volume. And for an arbitrary, well, let's say, cusp stream manifold, the simplicial volume is equal, oh, loosely speaking, is equal to the sum of the volumes of its hyperbolic pieces after you do a decomposition along essential two spheres and essential tori. So, and one of the very few explicit formulas relating the two, relating the volume and the color trans polynomial, is the volume conjecture. So, what it tells us, it tells you that for a hyperbolic link, uh, you can take limit of color Jones polynomials estimated at certain root of unity, and uh, limit exists, and it's actually the volume. And there is also a version of the conjecture that involves simplicial volume. In particular, you can write exactly the same conjecture for simplicial volume of knots. So for knots, it doesn't even have any changes. So what happens here? We are taking different polynomials. We are estimating them at different roots of unity. And surprisingly, not only this converges, but it actually converges to volume. Um, so intuition for this comes from physics. It's, it's for mathematician, for me, for example, it's hard to see why it's actually plausible even. And uh, as for proof, uh, so far it has been proven for some hyperbolic knots and links. However, all those links are very special. So first of all, there is a proof for figure eight knot. Um, there are actually several proofs. Uh, there is one by Ekholm, which you can find in papers of Hitoshi and Jun Murakami, um, which is perhaps the easiest. Then there is a proof for Borromean rings. That's application of results of Garofalidis and Talley. And uh, augmented octahedral links, whitehead chains by Van der Veen, and twisted whitehead links thing. So whitehead chains are uh, chains made up of those pieces. And this is with respect to the figure eight and Borromean rings. Um, this is an infinite class. However, if you look closer at all those links, they all are commens commensurable with whitehead link. So their volumes are rational multiples of the volume of whitehead link. And then if you go beyond links, Commensurable with whitehead links, nothing is known. Even for class of two bridge links, nothing is known. So it hasn't been proved. Um, so our goal is not to prove volume conjecture, but rather, in the spirit of volume conjecture, obtain an explicit volume of links in S3 and uh, coefficients of the color Jones polynomial. And we want it to be explicit, but we also want it to be something where we understand the intuition. Um, so here, for me, it's actually difficult to understand the intuition. And of course, volume conjecture by itself motivates many questions. Um, so Jones polynomial is determined by its coefficients. So when you look at this conjecture, this limit, you start to wonder, well, is there a correlation of the polynomial coefficients with hyperbolic volume? And actually, so those coefficients are just different numbers. So when you compute them, you well, there are programs that even can do this for you. but once you've done the computation, you very often lose track and intuition of what happened. So you put something in, there is a black box, and you get many, many numbers. So of course, conjecture suggests that there are certain properties of these coefficients that persist as n goes to infinity. And so the question is, what can we really say about them? And the very first result of this nature was due to this will play back in the 80s, so soon after Jones polynomial came up. So for a link with a connected irreducible alternating diagram, the first and last coefficients, uh, which means coefficients of the terms of maximal and minimal degree, in the Jones polynomial are plus minus one. So if you look at this example, indeed, we have one, 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 right, for this link. <coughs> and in 2006, um, Desbach and Lin um, proved that for an alternating link, the absolute values of the first three and last three coefficients of the color Jones polynomial are independent of color n <coughs> when n is at least three. So they actually stabilize starting three. And then the second and penultimate coefficients are independent when um, for n at least two. So they stabilize from classical Jones polynomial. And moreover, the leading and trailing coefficients are known to be plus minus one for all n. So Fisseldwit showed this only for color two, right? And Dasbach and Lin proved it for all colors. So indeed, they do stabilize. And natural question, well, what about the rest? Okay, we have first three and last three. What about the others? Um, 
So they actually made a conjecture that others also stabilize. And the way they proved this result was that they looked at um, something called checkerboard curve. So they actually showed that for alternating links, the first three and last three coefficients depend only on the reduced checkerboard graph. Um, so to obtain, ob obtain, for example, black checkerboard graph for this diagram, we color regions in black and white, we put vertices in every a vertex in every black region, connect through crossings by edges, and then we get a graph and we just reduce it, uh, deleting multiple edges. And well, really the main work in this theorem was the third coefficient. Um, the first two and last two <coughs> coefficients of the color Jones polynomial come from classical Jones polynomial. And for classical Jones polynomial, you can use a toot graph. So a toot graph is a graph coming from uh, graph theory. And it's known that Jones polynomial is equal to toot polynomial up to certain factor. Um, however, once you go beyond the second, this doesn't work anymore. So that's why Lin used skein theory to prove um, the result about the third coefficient. And what it tells us, it tells us that we can actually use certain properties of a link diagram to compute these coefficients, right? So it's actually quite natural to compute them from a diagram. And uh, they also defined uh, the notion of a tail, or respectively the head of a polynomial. So it's the sequence of its lowest, or respectively the highest degree terms up to specified length. And for image, the head is actually the tail, uh, because you can just plug in one over Q into the color Jones polynomial. And um, the head and tail does not always exist. So there is an example by uh, Armand and Dustbach. Uh, so this torus node actually has two different tails, one for even n and one for odd color n. So respectively, its mirror image has two different heads. And so they conjectured that head and tail exist for alternating links. So this for alternating links, all coefficients stabilize for n large enough. Okay. And well, maybe that's not the biggest class, of course, was the first question whether uh, you can say something about bigger families than alternating links. And um, so for which other links do head and tail exist? And checkerboard graphs and surfaces that are associated to alternating diagram have a natural generalization. Uh, well, it, it was suggested at different times by Steinmanov, it's also suggested by Thistleweight earlier, uh, so in some different form. So these are called adequate <coughs> graphs, adequate surfaces, A adequate, B adequate. So let's just uh, look quickly at that. So for every crossing in the link diagram, we take something called A resolution or B resolution respectively. And um, after you've done it, uh, you have actually something like a six, well, a set of circles, right? And this picture, by the way, is due to Jessica, <laughs> who graciously <laughs> allowed me to use it, graciously. And so what happens, this is called, uh, well, these are A state circles. And uh, we can connect the points through letters A. So that's where we did this A resolution. And then we have just something called A graph. And if A graph has no one edge loops, the link is called A adequate. If you do the same for B resolution and you get B state graph, which has no one edge loops, um, then your link is called B adequate. If it's both A and B adequate, it's called adequate. So these graphs generalize naturally checkerboard graphs. And for alternating links, they are checkerboard graphs. So they're exactly the same. And so they're just black and white. You can reduce it, you get reduced checkerboard graph or reduced state graph. And the existence of head and tail was proved by Armand for adequate links in, I think it's 2011. Uh, so it turns out all links for which A and B graphs do not have one edge loops <coughs> have um, coefficients which stabilize for every n. And independently, the same year, uh, with different methods, uh, it was proved by Grofolitis and Tanle uh, for alternating links. So head and tail exist. Your link just has to be nice enough. All right. Now let's, well, we saw that there is no simple expression for volume function in general. So suppose we now want to relate this coefficient that's clearly stabilized to volume. What can we do? And we cannot just take Lobachevsky function and so on. So 
instead of the exact calculation, uh, one may estimate volume from a diagram. So one may use volume bones. <coughs> and um, so let me uh, give a quick review of the bones that existed before. So perhaps the earliest one was due to Adam's antithesis, and later it was recovered by Lacanby. So for a hyperbolic link with a crossing number C, different from the figure eight knot, volume is at most four C minus 16, multiplied by the volume of uh, ideal hyperbolic tetrahedron, regular ideal hyperbolic tetrahedron. And uh, Lacanby also improve this because uh, what he did, he looked at twists. So a twist is either a connected collection of bygones arranged in a row, uh, which is not a part of a longer sequence of bygones, or just a single crossing. So this is a twist, and then something else happens. And if you have very long twists and you have many crossings, so your bond does not give you a good number. Uh, so that can be uh, looked at uh, link with a prime alternating diagram and give bound uh, in terms of number of twists. In fact, upper bound works for all links, all hyperbolic links. Lower bound works only for alternate links. So he got 16 twist number minus 16. And um, on the other side, he got one half twist number minus one. And so very soon after it came out, it was improved by Yen and Dylan Thurston. So given a diagram, you can actually do better upper bound. You can actually have 10. So 10 twist number minus one multiplied by V3. And um, so Yen and Dylan Thurston also show that this bound is asymptotically sharp. So constant 10 cannot be improved. Asymptotically, because you take uh, something that looks like an infinite link. Um, so this is chain fence link. This is actually a um, picture from the paper. And it realizes upper bound exactly. So you look at polyhedral decomposition. Uh, that's how faces come together at the projection plane. Uh, so you have some hexagonal faces and you have called bow tie faces and uh, it gives you four tetrahedra here and then six here six uh, using stellar decomposition as on the next picture so you get exactly ten um, and bonds for some other families of hyperbolic links uh, were obtained by uh, David Hooter, Ethical Fergani and Jessica Purcell for example there are lower bounds beyond alternating links there are upper bounds for some links which are not alternating and there is a monograph and there is a lot of interesting and useful, there are many interesting and useful results there. So therefore one may use certain properties of a link diagram to estimate the volume of the link complement. And before that we said that, well, we can use link diagram to estimate some coefficients. So this gives you intuitions that maybe you can uh, connect these two together. And the above results were used to establish correlation <coughs> of the first two and last two coefficients of the color Jones polynomial with volume. And I'm, I'm putting colors in parentheses. <coughs> they are coefficients of the color Jones polynomial. However, they stabilize from color two. So this is exactly the same for classical Jones polynomial, right? So, so let's, uh, let's say that this is our color Jones polynomial. So we have, these are stabilized, stabilized coefficients from color three, A, B, C, and then gamma, beta, alpha. And then Dasbach and Lin uh, prove something they called volumish theorem. Um, so let k be an alternating link, and let b be the second coefficient, coefficient and beta the penultimate coefficient. And you can uh, create these bounds. So in a way, this is rewriting the bound in terms of twist number, now in terms of Jones polynomial coefficients. But of course, you need formulas for the coefficients to do that. right? So um, here we have, well, this is almost like in this lower bound. It's just slightly better because of uh, there is volume of ideal octahedron involved, regular ideal octahedron. We have maximum of the two, and there we have, on the upper side, we have some of the two coefficients. And once again, volume bounds for various other families of hyperbolic links beyond alternating in terms of the first two and last two coefficients were obtained by David uh, Jessica and Ethical Fagiani, and also others. I think there was a few student who worked on that, and so several. And they all involve first two and last two coefficients. And on the other hand, what I also learned, so Effie and Dave and <coughs> Jessica showed that uh, the second and the penultimate coefficient, in a way, does not determine the volume, actually. So 
if you write down, um, there is no single linear function in terms of those coefficients that would actually determine the volume. So these coefficients do not coarsely determine volume. And um, this suggests that maybe you need at least the third, right? But of course, computationally, uh, it's harder. So there were no upper bounds for the involving the third coefficients and any further coefficients. And so let's look again at these upper bounds for the volume that were previously used to establish the correlation. Uh, so there are actually links for which this uh, upper bound in terms of crossing number works better. For example, for this one, it works better because there are many uh, short twists. And then there are links for which the second one works better. So that one gives better number for this link because we have long twists, two long twists, which would become six crossings, right? And so the constant 10 and 4 cannot be improved in general, but this suggests that maybe a mix will be finer. Maybe if you kind of make some hybrid of those, you will be closer to the actual volume function. And the color Jones polynomial point of view also suggests that a finer bound is needed to demonstrate the correlation. So we know that two coefficients do not really determine the volume, right? And <coughs> so what I will be talking about is refined approach to the upper bound for volume. And um, so let's look at another characteristic, simple characteristic of link coming from the link diagram. So not a twist, but rather we will distinguish twists of different lengths. So let's say T1 is twist number of twists with one crossings, T2 is number of twists with two crossings, T3 is number of twists with three crossings, and so on. So this one has five twists. Well, but if you look at one crossing twist, you have only one, two, right? Yeah, one, two. And with two crossings, you have just two. And if you look at twists with at least four crossings, you actually have exactly one. And um, so something we showed, and which seems very actually natural, um, that for a non-split link with a diagram D, the simplicial volume is at most 10 G4, which are long twists of lengths at least four, plus 83 plus 62 plus 41 minus certain linear constant uh, and multiplied by the volume of regular ideal tetrahedron. And so if you, if you take, if you look at the previous slide, so for links with short twists, that's exactly uh, the bound that was established by uh, Adams and Lockenby. And if you look at the long, uh, at the diagrams where there are many long twists, that's exactly the other bound with 10 in front of it. So it's kind of, it's kind of a mix and a hybrid and but a very, a very natural one. And this really allowed to finally involve the third coefficient. So a refined upper bound allowed actually to improve the volume of theorem now. Mm. I have a question. Sure. Isn't the Adams locking down improved by her referring to one? It's like to DA instead of four DC. I thought it's about lower. So then they have V8 in, in lower in lower bound. So Mm. There's a four, the four thing? It should be so, I mean, V8 should still give you. Mm. So there is three, three points something, right? So it's, it's very close to four, right? If it's, if it's improved, so it's three point. So pretty much the closest I integer you get four still, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there is also improved lower bound. Um, this one I was thinking about. Um, so by l the one by Luck and V was improved also involved in regular ideal octahedron. All right. And so let's again this be our notation for the color Jones polynomial. But now, well, we will look at further coefficients and further coefficients do not stabilize from color two. So we will put indices uh, in uh, near coefficients. So suppose we have a hyperbolic alternating link, then the volume is, the upper bound for the volume is at most six, gamma two plus C two minus gamma three plus C three, um, all that multiplied by six and minus um, two B two plus beta two. So what you see here, you see actually the third coefficient, uh, the third from the end coefficient. So this is for color three, th that's the one that stabilizes and these are coefficients for color two. So these are the third 
and the third from the last coefficient for classical trans polynomial before they stabilized. However, this really shows you that, um, so it is an improvement, and it really shows you that, well, colored trans polynomial has to do something with it, because um, if you just look at the first two and last two, they're the same for the classical trans polynomial, and it turns out to do better, you actually need um, the difference between the third coefficients of the colored drones and the third coefficients of the classical drones bef so before it's stabilized. And it's actually not obvious from the expression that it's an improvement over a dust clean bound, but you can show this. It's so there are certain linear relations with coefficients satisfy. So uh, you can show that this is an improvement. And you can look at some simple examples. This is the simplest possible, perhaps. So the volume is of figure eight is 2v3, and the previous upper bound uh, would give you 10v3 for this link, and this upper bound would give 4v3. Mm. All right, any, any questions? And let me say a little bit about the proof, at least on the geometric side. And well, really, the proof is a mix of different ideas that existed before. Um, so if you look at each of them, they all seem somehow very natural. So what Lakin did when he was proving his upper bound was, I guess, the technique for most upper bounds. So first of all, you pass from an original link L to a link for which the volume will be easier to estimate. So for something that would have a nice polyhedral decomposition and hopefully nice triangulation in the end. Um, and so we'll do the same except for our link will be slightly different, the link to the one well, the one to which we will pass. So we will augment every twist, as something like NBA did, but we will augment only every long twist. So augmenting means um, basically adding a circle. This is around two strands, so this is called crossing circle. And uh, so we will do this operation ag of augmenting and deleting all crossings for all long twists, for all twists that are at least of length four in terms of crossings. And well, we have to prove two simple statements. One is that, indeed, when we do this, the simplicial volume of our first link will be bounded above by the volume of the link we obtain. And the second claim is that the simplicial volume of this link that we will obtain is at most what we got, right? So 10 g4 plus 8 g3 plus 62 plus 41, and so on. And well, you might think that simplicial volume is there to beautify the statement, but it's not true. So you, even if you are interested only in hyperbolic volume and only in a hyperbolic link to start with, you cannot uh, prove it without using simplicial volume. Uh, so what happens is that you start, suppose you start with a hyperbolic link, L, uh, you do this operation, the resultant link might not be hyperbolic. And this was not a problem uh, before because, uh, so previous, for previous bounds, links, links were fully augmented. So this link would be fully augmented and fully augmented links are hyperbolic. <coughs> It's also not a problem if you do alternating link because augmented alternating link is um, actually hyperbolic. However, if you do this uh, to non-alternating link, if you augment some twist and you do not augment some twist, then um, you might get something non-hyperbolic in yeah, the end. Can you also augment it or is it just that you didn't know it by a theorem that it's hyperbolic? I think you can get a composite link and you can even get a split link, which will clearly be not. Right, I, I think so. Sp well, split, maybe you need a composite link to start with, but I think you can do. All right, so the simplicial volume has to be there, and since we're using it in the proof, it's easier just to state it for simplicial volume uh, more, more generally. Um, so let's look at this very first claim. So the volume of the original link is bounded by, by the volume of the link we get. And um, so the technique that can be used for this was uh, Dean filling. So if you look at uh, such a diagram, this is called full twist. So it's just a bicon. And half twist is something that just has a crossing. So to get rid of half twist, you can <coughs> use Dean filling. You can pass from here to here just by Dean filling on this crossing circle. And uh, so Thurston's notes tell you that this is actually, this reduces the volume. Um, so there is proof of this in Thurston's notes. There is also proof in Jens' thesis. And in fact, if you have hyperbolic volume, it strictly reduces. If you have simplicial volume, it's non-strict, but there are still theorems that say 
that it reduces. Um, however, this does not work if you have so-called half twist. And so we have if you have just one crossing above um, above a crossing circle. And um, to patch this, let me use this Adams result. So suppose we have an arbitrary to tangle uh, G, and suppose we have two hyperbolic links that look like this, uh, picture B and picture A. So Colin Adams proves that the volumes of these links in S3 are equal. And uh, so this is due to the fact that three punctured sphere is present in the complement. So if you look at this, uh, this bounds two punctured disk. So there are two punctures, and then the third puncture makes it three punctured sphere. And Colin Adams in his thesis proves that three punctured spheres make the volume rigid. So if you cut alone three punctured sphere, you can add a half twist and glue it back, and the volume is unchanged. So we have to generalize it to simplicial volume. And um, well, at first it, seem, it seemed very natural at first, but somehow when we started to look at details, it turned out there are some details. So, so suppose now we have an arbitrary two tangle, and suppose we have non-split links. So I'll do it for non-split links. And then the simplicial volumes of these links will be the same. And so to prove this generalization, we have to consider a decomposition of a link complement by essential Tori. So we assume it's non-split, so we don't have to bother about decomposition along essential spheres. So once we consider the decomposition along essential Tori and prove that pieces, hyperbolic pieces, have the same volume, we are done. Uh, so the main question is how can a torus of a decomposition intersects this three punctured sphere? And these are really all cases. So what happens is that to be essential, to be reducible, uh, torus has to have a meridian which would travel around one of the punctures, right? So you can really draw them all. Um, so the meridian should be parallel to one of the punctures. And so for most such intersection scenarios, you can still find three punctured spheres um, in this fragment. And once you have a three punctured spheres, you can use original Adams result. You have a hyperbolic piece and the volume is the same or you have a non-hyperbolic piece and then volumes are just zero, right? So for example, if you look, here's your three punctured spheres too. So the red, uh, red is a torus, torus of decomposition. And here, if you look inside of this torus, you still have three punctured sphere inside it. Uh, same here, you have three punctured sphere inside the torus and you can see there, right? So in most cases, it's just almost trivial. Um, in some cases, you cannot, in some cases, when you cut along this torus, you cannot cut along three punctured sphere, you cannot re-glue it back. Mm. So when you can use Adam's result, <coughs> it's done. But suppose you cannot. So suppose you have such a case, and uh, so suppose you cut along this three punctured sphere, what happens with torus? You add it half twist, uh, torus cannot be glued back to itself, right? So you have to construct different uh, JSJ decompositions of, of these two links. However, such that the volumes of the pieces will be the same. Mm. So one way to do it, I'm still not sure if it's the simplest way. I think maybe it is. But basically what you do, you uh, take torus that would follow this torus in this tangle, and then that would be boundary parallel elsewhere. And if you look inside, you will get something like this, where G prime is a subtangle of G that's inside the first torus, right? So what you can what you can see is that actually inside you have homeomorphic pieces of the decomposition and they will have the same volume. And you can also look at the outside and outside you will also have a homeomorphic pieces of decomposition, which once again should have the same volume. So this is just an illustration of one of those cases when you cannot re-glue re -glue things back. <coughs> and that's, that's one torus after another torus where pieces are inside and outside are homeomorphic despite the fact that Torre are different. And basically you proceed with similar analysis for all cases, just step by step, and you get the Adams result. Any, any questions? All right, so let's look where we were. Um, so we were looking at the proof of the theorem, right? At some ideas of the proof. And we were looking at the first claim. So we wanted to bound the volume of L by the volume of um, another link, right? And for this we used generalization of Adam's result. However, it cannot be applied directly. So suppose you have a non-split link to start with. Um, 
once you do this partial augmentation, you might also actually get split link as a result. So you cannot apply atoms directly. You still have to look at decomposition uh, by essential spheres before you look at the decomposition by essential chlorine. Um, and once again, that's not very difficult, but you just have to be careful. And then uh, you can, after that, you can get to claim two. So if you look at them, suppose your initial link was not split. <coughs> However, the link, the partially augmented link is split. So the only scenario when this happens is really when you started by composite, when you started with a composite link. So that was the link you started with. You substituted uh, twist by crossing circle, and you got something um, split. However, it splits in links that looks either the same as L or almost the same. So once you twist it, you might get mirror image and into few unknotted crossing circles. So basically, you just use additivity of the simplicial volume under not sum to say that the volume will be the same, even if it's now a split link. And these extra components, they will never, uh, they do not contribute to volume, right? So these are just unknotted um, components. So you can take care of this as well. And any questions, comments? So this is just to illustrate technique. So this is a very classical uh, topology, or it's straightforward to prove the first claim. And now let's go to the second claim. So second claim, is slightly more geometric. So you have to bound um, the volume of this new link you obtained, of this partial augmented link, where you augmented all long twists. And how you do this? Well, you certainly you come up with a nice enough polyhedral decomposition, and then you <coughs> triangulate it into the count, right? So, <coughs> and the decomposition is really a hybrid of the decompositions that were there before. And when it, you look at it, it doesn't look very efficient. However, it happens to be in this case. Um, so at every crossing, we do something very similar to Minasco decomposition. So at every crossing, we put four arcs and say, well, that's like a phase bounded with four arcs. And then at every crossing circle, we do something very similar to what Anna Gold and Dylan Thurston did. So we put uh, two bow tie faces and uh, we have every piece of diagram that lies between crossing circle and the crossing uh, will be a place for a vertex. So here I numbered them, labored them by numbers. The numbers tell you what the vertices are. So this, this is all one vertex here, this is all one vertex here. So once I draw these faces, I can now merge uh, vertices together. So eight is just one vertex, six is just one vertex, three is just one vertex. And what you get is uh, this picture. So gray faces are faces coming from bow ties. And then you have, uh, for example, this doesn't always work. Yeah, for example, these three faces, one, two, three, are here. One, two, three, and so on. So from the first side, it doesn't look very efficient because you have many, many faces. However, it turns out that later these faces just fold. So they help the gluing, but uh, they do not contribute to the volume. So in the end, you actually uh, win a little bit. Um, so, so to obtain the complement of L, what we will do, we will fold those rectangular faces, dotted faces, these ones that were around crossings, so here. Uh, then we will also uh, glue together two bow tie faces, and then we will double along the rest of the faces. So the rest are these. We double here. So even though you have many faces, the ones which you fold, these ones, do not contribute to the volume, but they help the gluing. So, and um, so the last thing to do is really to triangulate it and to count the number of tetrahedra, right? And then we're done. So all you do is just put one vertex above the link diagram, put one vertex below the link diagram, and connect. Um, so you connect it to bow tie faces so that you get four tetrahedra, and you s do a stellar decomposition of the rest of the faces, um, the ones that did not fold. So this is a stellar decomposition. And basically you get the count. So where you have these things, you get 10, and here you get a better count. 
Yeah? And of course, later you collapse those two artificial vertices, one from above and one from below, and this collapsing will result into subtracting a linear constant from your bound. Yeah? So this is really a mix of ideas that were around before, and it seems like a very, very natural mix. Any, any questions I can? This one? Yeah. Well, it doesn't look something I can do in two dimensions, right? So I, but what I do, I will fold those faces together, and then I will identify to both tie faces together. And then at the rest, I will, at the rest of the faces, I will double. So it, yeah, it doesn't look very natural if you try to draw it. However, you do get link complement once you do it. And uh, well, there is a detailed description of this decomposition online. It just, it just came out. Though the paper that came out is on default of Mason links. Oh. All right, so we proved the first claim, we proved the second claim. So this pretty much proves the refined upper bound. And then from there, you really work at a uh, look at the work of uh, Dasbach and Lin and they have certain, um, well, they have s there are certain relations which first, second, and third coefficients satisfy of the Jones polynomial, and then involve things like uh, edges of certain multiplicity of a checkerboard graph. And they used the skin theory to prove it. However, what they proved looks very uh, nice. It's not not very big formulas, and so edges of certain multiplicity correspond to actual twists of certain lengths, right? And then there are some extra parameters which you can deal with, like uh, number of certain regions in the graph and so on. And so you get uh, a refined upper bound in terms of the coefficients of the color Jones polynomial involving first three and last three coefficients. Um, so let me, um, are there any questions on the, on the bound itself? Yeah. All right, so let me tell a bit about well, further questions and what really we're looking at now and what we'd like uh, people to look at. So the lower bound for the volume of alternating links was proved by Luckenby. And of course, and later it was improved. And then there are other bounds by uh, David, Jessica, and Effie for other links beyond alternating. So of course the question is whether this refined approach can work with uh, lower bound. Well, we still don't know, but Involving third coefficient would be interesting because we know that first two and last two do not really determine the volume, and maybe uh, this can be done. And then, well, the question is whether we can do this beyond alternating. So we proved the refined upper bound for simplicial volume of all links. So this is rather general. However, on the Jones polynomial side, uh, we still have only alternating links. And what happens there, if you go beyond alternating, you have problems with this graph. So if you look at the state graph um, of links beyond alternating, um, there is not, well, it might not be twist reduced. So you can actually get more vertices than you need. And it's very hard to count things because they're not uniquely determined anymore. It's not, they're not canonical anymore. So the question is whether uh, this can be done for some other classes because Jones polynomial say it is limited to alternating links so far. And then for adequate links, other coefficients of the color Jones polynomial stabilize for a color n large enough, so-called head and tail by Dasbach and Lin and Grofalidis and Tanle and by Armand. So how are these related to volume? So is further refinement actually possible? Mm, can we uh, doing this and our methods uh, so far do not allow us to go further but maybe someone can do it and well another question well how close can we actually get to the volume function using these methods because so far these are upper and lower bounds so we refine them we get much better bounds but still so there is this result by uh, <coughs> Effie, Dave and Jessica that volume is not in general course determined by any linear function of the second and penultimate coefficients uh, what can we say about first three and last three? Can volume be determined as a linear function? 
In fact, they have a class of examples. Maybe this class of examples will also tell you something about this word, uh, polynomial. And um, let me tell you about a uh, slightly different approach, something we're also working on to this problem. So, of course, uh, <laughs> another question is, can one really do something similar through exact computation? So rather than getting a bound, can we relate coefficients of the colored Jones polynomial to the volume through exact computation? And um, so that's really work in progress. So we obtained polynomials for two bridge links that allow to compute volume exactly. And from the diagram, um, so this is based on um, our previous work with uh, Morven Silkweed. So you can actually write down from the diagram for two bridge links, this only works for two bridge links. So you can write down exact polynomial that gives you a uh, root that determines hyperbolic structure and volume. So um, all tetrahedral shapes are simple looking formulas of this root, of this polynomial. And uh, what you do is just take Lobachevsky functions of them and add them up. So for example, that's for a twist node. So twist node is, uh, uh, well, twist nodes are infinite subclass of two bridge links and nodes. Uh, so this is how the polynomial would look like. That's your variable, w. And then, um, so suppose you have k plus two crossings so here, it's actually uh, n equals k over 2. So all that's involved in this po polynomial is number of crossings, right? So once you have number of crossings, you write down the polynomial. So that polynomial, the root of that polynomial, determines a hyperbolic structure. And it actually determines invariant trace field. It actually determines uh, the volume. But you need, um, so it's, it's actually, it's a very particular situation for two bridge links. Just one number determines everything. Mm, and that's the polynomial for this number. So, so we have explicit polynomial. And then on the other hand, um, <coughs> Armand and Dasbach obtained formulas for the coefficients of colored Jones polynomial. They also, have, they also have very explicit formulas which give you this, um, this coefficient for two bridge links. And also they have them from the diagram. And we are working on trying to relate it, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So. I think I'll stop here a bit early. Thank you. Well, not on the nose, that's for sure. And in fact, we, we actually tried it for, even for one particular link, we tried to get the volume conjecture. And we got into huge computation and it didn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so instead we decided that, well, maybe we use exact computation for relating the volumes, you know, not taking the whole limit at once, but rather relating maybe third, fourth. So that we have more hope to do. but. With volume conjecture, we were not able so far. But well, at least it gives you a hand on it. At least you can you can try. But for example, if you look at proof by Eckholm uh, for figure eight, so he has a very nice computation that just worked, and it just because it's a very special node. So I would say for some nodes, maybe you're able to just do computation and volume conjecture will just not work. But not for a whole class, for certain. So for some nodes which have lots of symmetry, lots of so yeah. Thank you, thank you for having me.